Okay, hi, my name is Jean. I work for Egalia. And as I usually do, when I get here, I caught a cold, which is, I think it's okay because I sound a lot like Rego now. <laughs> um, I'll be talking about WebKit for Wayland and its transition to WPE, uh, what it is, uh, what it was, what it is now, and where we think it should be going in the future. Um, so defining WPE, um, it started as a new WebKit port in, 2000, in late 2014. Um, the idea behind it is to not tie it to any toolkit or any specific uh, Linux environment or platform. Um, so what you gain is some additional freedom, what you can do with the engine and how you can use it in various use cases on various different platforms. Uh, but it also has, what you lose is the, is the benefit of relying on toolkit for quite a lot of things as we figured it out uh, over the past two years. It uh, should be noted that the, uh, the port is very much based on the work we've been doing on the WebKit GDK port. Um, so the two ports share most of the non-GNOME dependencies, where the non-GNOME dependencies would be uh, specifically libraries that are not required, that are required to... Non-GNOME dependencies would be libraries that are not required to run under a GNOME desktop. As you can see, the common things that we still use are uh, stuff like glib, libsub, gstreamer, free type, harfbus, Cairo, and actually there's additional stuff, but as it turns out, there's a lot of we depend on as a browser engine. So for instance, glib and libsub, those are still developed under the GNOME umbrella, but they are quite um, scalable to different platforms. Um, so we started with the name WebKit for Wayland simply because of the reason that it was an accurate name for what we were doing at the time. Um, the UI process, uh, which we, uh, since we adopted the WebKit 2 architecture, uh, we also adopted the process architecture that came with that. Uh, the UI process was at the, at the start um, actually not a process, it was built into a shared library and that was then loaded into the Wayland compositor. Uh, specifically on the desktop and different devices that had support for it, we were using the Western compositor. Uh, later we did uh, do a small compositor of our own called Athol. Uh, that was mainly to be used on the Raspberry Pi. Anyway, in that setup, the, the web process um, ended up acting as the only EGL client of that compositor. And the, um, the, the only way that this would work is that uh, since you were using a system-wide compositor, uh, you ended up having that EGL client render into a full screen in the full screen mode. So it did work, but it had its downsides, everything from limited use cases to, to essentially quite nasty stuff that could be done since you are merging the UI process and the, uh, the compositor. So among the other stuff that we couldn't do is uh, show a second web view. There was possibilities where you could. Uh, there were possibilities where you could have a second web page loaded, and you would, in the compositor, handle the graphical output of that web page. But you ended up doing. You ended up implementing a compositor essentially, and there was not much to be done in the web browser engine itself. Um, there was also, like I said, this security problem because you had web content in the web process, which enabled you communi com communication with the UI process. 
and the UI process and the system-wide uh, compositor living in the same in the same memory space is a like it's written a bad design that can lead you into uh, into problems. So we took the initial idea and developed it for further. And um, uh, one option was to provide a platform generic solution that would have you uh, that would enable you processing the web content. Uh, what you would do uh, with the graphical output would then depend on the use case you are you have to implement and um, on the platform you are working on. So you have, um, um, for instance. Single, uh, well, we started, the previous approach was specifically meant for uh, use cases where you have a single web page showing on the uh, entire screen. Uh, what we developed this into is not relying on the system compositor, of a Wayland-like compositor, to, to provide that functionality. So um, what we kept from the previous design is using EGL in web process to render the actual uh, content as defined by the web page. Um, and we also continued sharing the graphics buffer from that web process into the UI process. The only, the biggest difference in this specific area is that we weren't relying anymore on the Wayland EGL extension and capability. We were demanding of the platform to provide us with that same functionality. Um, the UI process in this new um, arc, uh, in this new setup would then take care of displaying that content in whatever way it can and should. The WPE acronym uh, in the at the beginning it didn't really mm, have any specific meaning and uh, it was essentially chosen by me as a as a sensible three letter acronym to be used as uh, for the port in WebKit code. Uh, since the using three letter acronyms is uh, pretty much the standard way of defining ports in WebKit. Um, so we now have the trouble of explaining it. Um, I originally started with, I imagined it to stand for something like a web platform engine or a WebKit port experiment. Um, the WebKit para embebidos is a Spanish um, is a Spanish version of it. Uh, what's uh, now commonly being used to explain it is WebKit Pure Embedded. So there is no clear definition. I don't know if there should be, <laughs> and I'm quite fine with the status quo. So the port um, essentially depends on this libwpe helper library. And what it is, is a small uh, library written in C that is defining these various uh, interfaces, which are then used by the WPE port in WebKit. Uh, so it's essentially just interface definitions in the header files that are then included from WebKit. And there's also the uh, minimal facility for loading uh, shared libraries that actually implement those interfaces that are used by WebKit. So these are the four basic interfaces that uh, are used for um, rendering in the web process, uh, sharing the, the graphical output with the UI process, and then um, the pro uh, and then there's interfaces that display those uh, that output in the UI process. So there's the renderer host interface uh, in the UI process, which is one per the process. And then uh, th every 
view and page combo both uh, work uh, al alongside each other. Those are using the view backend interface. In the web process, you have the renderer backend EGL, uh, that is one instance per web process. And then you have uh, renderer backend EGL targets. Those are used by, sorry. Those are used by, let me put this back into full screen. <laughs> it's in Spanish. <laughs> I'm not that good. F5. F5 is a keyword. OK, thank you. But actually, it's here on the remote F5. <laughs> anyway, uh, the, where was I? The, the backend EGL targets, those are uh, per view page and page combo, but are kept in the web process. So as the name suggests, uh, the, current, uh, the current interfaces only support uh, EGL rendering in the web process. And uh, these interfaces are then able to communicate between each other across the processes. Uh, just to get uh, the graphical output uh, up on screen. Uh, and the communication here is done through Unix file descriptors, but it is independently of the, it is done independently of the WebKit2 IPC mechanisms. There's also a few other interfaces. Uh, there's a bunch of input interfaces you can use to define key, mouse, key, pointer, and touch events, which you then pipe into the related view backend in the UI process. Uh, they, uh, there's currently also pasteboard interfaces, uh, which would allow any platform to implement pasteboard coordination between the UI process and the web process. Um, what is possible is to add more of these as the need arises. These are not set in stone. We don't. We haven't entered any freeze on the interfaces API yet. So, uh, as we develop uh, the web engine, uh, the specific for port for different use cases, we might be required to add additional ones. So, uh, while libwpe is a base help li helper library. Um, you have to go out and implement all the interfaces in a separate shared library. Uh, libwpe mesa is a reference implementation of those and it specifically depends on the modern Linux graphics stack. Um, so what I usually mean by that when I say it and that's I actually say it a lot it's uh, we, we depend on a v recent enough Linux uh, libdrm to communicate between the user space and the kernel space, and then there is and also the Mesa library. The current um, uh, default behavior is to use rendering nodes to render in the web process and then uh, rely on libgbm to uh, wrap the, graphic, uh, the graphics buffers and share them with the UI process. Uh, what's left to be implemented, well, it's actually already implemented, but is waiting review, is the nested compositor approach, which was adopted already by the GDK port. Um, when it comes to presenting the graphical output, uh, there are view backends that support either running as a Wayland client um, di directly under uh, a Wayland compositor like Weston. And the other option is to use DRM API to, um, to show the content in full screen mode like that, um, that initial approach of WebKit for Wayland. 
the next, the latest thing we are we are working on in this library is providing exportable view backend. Uh, I don't know if the name is the best, but idea is to hand off the graphics buffers to the user who can essentially pipe into the view backend and receive out EGL images. Uh, those, can, those can be then used in a specific um, uh, and a different OpenGL scenes. Uh, what it also enables is this headless mode where you are essentially snapshotting the graphical output uh, as provided by the uh, web process and you don't actually visually present it but you are allowed to read pixels off of the buffer and store it in image in images on disk um, talk a bit about the API uh, the from the beginning uh, the idea is to use the webkit 2 C API um, so it means just raw uh, C API as is provide as it provided by the WebKit 2 layer, we didn't really bother with developing anything new uh, that could be based uh, on glib. Um, so uh, there's just a few additions that uh, we have to provide, like the WebKit view struct um, and um, essentially this follows pretty much what upstreaming is doing in regards of API in WebKit. Uh, there is no radical change expected in the long term. Um, so this API is here to stay essentially, I think, for at least a few years. Um, so I wanted to talk a bit about upstream and how the port wants to essentially uh, proceed with upstreaming. Uh, upstreaming is the ultimate goal. Um, the Until then we really want to stay close to the upstream. Uh, so until this summer we were doing weekly pulls from upstream and created a tag in the GitHub uh, repository. Uh, and this proved to be quite taxing uh, for us because it is a lot of work. Uh, so now we've decided to do monthly releases instead. Uh, what will not change is uh, frequent pulls from upstream. So we plan to stay close to upstream. Uh, the only difference now will be that we will just have this one monthly release one tag per month in the GitHub repository. Um, so the last part talks about the roadmap and um, there, there's also stuff included that we discussed at this Hackfest over the past few days. And um, there's a lot of work essentially. Uh, what uh, the beauty of this is that a lot of such work would also apply to the GDK port and probably also to others like the EFL. So uh, we spent two hours on graphics yesterday and I think that was quite productive um, but uh, I believe there still may be some dis disagreement on what approach to take here. So essentially, graphics, uh, the graphics pipeline is where we uh, suck a lot. Uh, we have a working uh, rendering uh, uh, engine, essentially, but it's quite stale and could be improved much, much further. So yesterday, we discovered the beauty of display lists and how these could be implemented and then discussed a bit the additional compo composition optimizations we could be doing based on those display lists and in general as well. Uh, while uh, I think we only support, uh, I mean, we support OpenGL ES3, 
uh, but since we are committed to supporting OpenGL ES2 as well, uh, there is essentially not much GL ES3 sweet, uh, sweetness that we use at this point. So this should probably something is something that we should look into and improve. Uh, Vulkan is the new graphics API um, and it was released earlier this year. And at this point, um, if we uh, there's a good enough uh, implementation in the Mesa library for Intel GPUs, um, so I would be happy to experiment with Vulkan. Uh, having time to do that is a whole different matter. <laughs> um, but as far as the graphics stack uh, goes, I would propose to just rewrite it from grounds up. And uh, this is, of course, something that has to be discussed across uh, different people in the project. But that is essentially just my stance, not necessarily stance of the WPE port. Uh, when it comes to media, uh, what uh, we are currently working on in the WPE port is MSC support. Uh, this is essentially a done project. Uh, what remains is upstreaming it. And we made good advances on that regard uh, during the SACFest. Um, what remains is actually WebM improvements in, uh, uh, when used with MSC. There's a few oddities in the uh, WebM demuxer and GStreamer, and uh, there's a lot of bugs that should be fixed either in GStreamer or in our implementation of MSC to work around those bugs. JavaScript core is, uh, I think, uh, objectively, it's a state of the art engine. Uh, a lot of this goes to uh, to the hackers working uh, on it, uh, and essentially there is not much to do. Uh, the uh, JavaScript core was, I think, the first engine to reach the latest ECMAScript compliance. Uh, what we are having trouble with is uh, MIPS support. Um, so essentially, the basic steps here would be to take the uh, to to provide a MIPS uh, builder and to fix the support for good and keep it fixed. Uh, when it comes to standard, um, this is uh, the the uh, part where WebKit as a whole lags the most. Uh, it is improving though, uh, alas, not as fast as it should. So there is some low hanging fruit, some shorter specifications that could be easily implemented. Uh, and um, the fruit that is already ripe is essentially such implementations in the web core. Um, but what we're not doing is providing the platform specific implementations. We had uh, GamePad API support at one point, for instance. Uh, that uh, drop uh, that changed since the gamepad API was updated. So it's something we should uh, probably make a clear roadmap of what we want to support in, in terms of what's currently supportable and what we want to work on in terms of the greater things like working upstream in WebCore and implementing new standards. I think it's a that's a valiant work. And we are basically uh, helping out the web platform as a whole by providing compliant specifications. <laughs> they are to be used in Safari as well, not just WebKit GDK and various browsers based on it. Um, specifically to the WPE port, there is a small problem in usability. Um, there, uh, the idea is to do a small web browser, which would rely on the exportable interface I was presenting earlier. Um, and that would be usable on the desktop, just a mini browser functionality, mm, that level of usability. Um, also here is one of the things that we can't rely on a toolkit for, 
this is uh, theming. GDK has this sorted out. We don't have a, any theming uh, provided by the environment, simply by not depending on a toolkit. Uh, what we do now is do some basic, very basic and very ugly uh, drawing of various uh, various input forms uh, like buttons and checkers and whatnot. Uh, the idea is to rewrite that in CSS and to make it um, uh, customizable by the user via API. This might be an opportunity to do to add a new interface to the WP library. And then there's networking. Uh, we it would be very nice to have an HTTP2 uh, support in Lipsoup, uh, and it's not just that. There's a bunch of other security features with funny acronyms. Um, this should probably be a priority for the project as a whole. Um, a lot of it comes to LipSoup, I believe, and that is a project that needs more focus and more maintenance. Um, the, another thing is that WPE and the WPE Mesa libraries, source code for those is currently residing under source uh, third-party directory in WebKit. Uh, we are now working on moving these out of that repository since it's a precondition for any serious upstreaming effort. So we'll be doing new repositories in GitHub and then um, um, essentially spin them off into separate projects. Um, the another item for research is addressing this WebKit GDK Plus origin. Since a lot of uh, the initial work was done in WebKit GDK, um, there is an opportunity to investigate and possibly do something about the infrastructure that is shared between the two ports. Uh, so the main difference is essentially between the two ports is the GDK toolkit and um, various other GNOME specific dependencies. Uh, we should probably research a bit uh, whether it's possible to have uh, the, the, the WebKit GDK API and the GDK specific bits in the code, whether it would be possible to base that on the WPE port and to what, to what degree that is possible. So we should um, look into this, I believe and see how much can be done in that regard. Uh, the main benefit here would be that we would end up supporting essentially two ports for a cost that is maybe not of one, but I think much lower than two. This would also help, I believe, the upstreaming of the port since we should be then able to upstream only the platform specific bits and the API while keeping the, uh, the common parts between the two ports in synchronization even as they are at the moment in different repositories. Okay, so that was, I believe, yeah. That was the whole presentation. So if there are any questions or uh, requests for clarifications, Hit me. There's nothing. <laughs> that's that's not a. I think we discussed a lot of things yesterday, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> about that. And I put it all on one slide, so. <laughs> okay, thank you very much.